Welcome to Botany and Barrels, a Petrichor production. Happy December, folks! Yeah, happy December. We're we're in it. We're right in the, the middle of December. December. What is the wine that you brought today, Gabby? I brought a very special wine. Yeah. This is a Lajaris wine. What does that mean? Lajaris? Yeah. Lajaris is probably Brian's favorite winery right now. Oh. It is produced by Eric Wareheim. Oh. Okay. And his other winemaking partner, Joel. Mm-hmm. And Eric Wareheim, if you're not familiar with him, is a comedian, and he recently, I mean, he's probably had the company open longer, but we've known about it for the last two to three years, Mm -hmm. um, has made Lajaris, and it's a great winery. Um, They don't have, like, they don't have a vineyard. They pull their grapes from other vineyards, but it's a a great little Mm -hmm. company going on, Cool, and it's fun, and this is called Sweet Berry Wine, and... I bring this out because I don't know if you remember. Do you recognize that image on it? Is that Eric? Or is that Tim? Or is that neither? Neither. Who was that guy? You've watched Tim and Eric. Oh, it's... um. You can do it. I'm not going to remember his name, but I know who it is. Do you remember his character's name? No. He's got red hair. Is it Pee Pee Poo Poo Man? <laughs> Banana Pee Guy? <laughs> it's, it's John C. Riley's character. Yeah. It's Dr. Brule. Dr. Brule? Brule. B-R-U-L-E, I believe. Who's the guy that was on stage when we saw them who was like, anyway, it was, it was, a, it was a weird act. That was not John C. Riley. Oh, okay. I don't think he came to that show. We saw them live and yeah. Yeah. I don't think he, he's a big guy now. He doesn't do that sort of thing. I mean, oh. maybe. John C. Riley. So this is, so they did this because there's a, in his earlier things when he's, he's drinking wine. Mm. And he like drinks. He's like it tastes like grape juice. It's oh. like a sweet berry wine, and that's oh, what he says. Oh. And um, and he gets like sick drinking it, and that's why they have the image. It's like oh. so it looks like um, the image of it is <laughs> if you can picture John C. Riley for those of you that can picture him. Mm-hmm. He has glasses on. He's got big curly hair, mm-hmm. and it looks like someone just took an image of him and like took the impression of his face. With grape juice splattering, yeah, I guess, and a nice purple or watercolory, I guess you could say, is in a more professional way. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, because in the final bit of it, he's like basically throwing up this grape juice, uh-huh. <laughs> it's like dripping down his face. Um, and it's like for your health, <laughs> oh, yeah, for your health. I've seen that one, yeah, anyways. So it's like a nice white background, and then you got the the pink and purples of. This uh, drawing of John C. Riley as Dr. Brule. I mean, he has reoccurring segments on Tim and Eric's show. Mm-hmm. Well, that be- that all being said, I was going to say it looks like a nice bottle, but now I don't like it. Oh. <laughs> wow. I mean, I like it. I like it, but just like. What? <laughs> it's, like, it's a guy throwing up on a wine bottle. Well, he's not throwing up. It's well, the after of it. He's like drunk off of it. Yeah, I know. It's it's a funny the context bit. It's fun. It's a reference if you get it. Yeah. If you yeah, don't yeah. get it, then like you didn't get it. Yeah. You thought it was a nice bottle. Yeah. I do, and I I still think. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's a nice bottle. It, it's pretty bottle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a nice red wax mm-hmm. top to it, and then um, it is a it's a 2019 red blend mm-hmm. from Mendocino County. Again, it's called Sweetberry Wine. Sweetberry Wine from Lajaris Winery. What nice. do you What do you think of it? I do. I, I think the wax on top is really a nice touch to it. Yeah. I How think, much is this bottle? This is a thirty five dollar bottle of wine. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think it's like less than twenty dollars. It doesn't no. look like it is. It looks like like it is a nice bottle of wine, and like this is. I mean, it's funny and it's. Fun and nice looking. Oh, yeah, they right. they gotta gotta do the artwork, which is yeah. the other cool thing about Lajaris is they they pull local artists mm-hmm. to do their bottles and designs. Mm-hmm. Okay, where would you see this? What do you think about it? Where, where would this bottle pop up in your mind? In, Na- in Nina's fantasy, where would you see this? <laughs> Probably at like 
Well, I mean, it's like a nice bottle. Like, and it looks like a nice bottle. So I wouldn't just pull it out of, like, some random sloppy party, you know? Like, okay. I, like I think, yeah, like a good... But it's I think it's for, like, a specific crowd, especially if you want to... I mean, to get the full effect, you want someone who, like, knows Tim and Eric. Sure, but that's not... You don't have to. No, you definitely don't have to, but I think that would be the best situation. Anyway, it's it looks a little, and I mean, like, you can't tell really because the bottle's dark, but it's, it looks like it's a dark wine. It looks like maybe it's like a little heavier. I would probably have it for like a dinner party mm-hmm. among your friends who are in their late 20s, early 30s. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't know if I would like be like, Mom, look! Yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't see it with, I wouldn't do it with parents probably. I don't yeah. think, especially if they like wine already, I feel yeah. like they would undervalue it yeah i think for what it is um i think it's got to be someone who's a little bit newer into wine Mm -hmm. i feel like this winery does a good job at making wine a little bit more welcoming to everybody and because they aren't like they don't have their own vineyard so they're pulling from around and making Mm. good wines out of what they can get oh interesting and not saying that they can't get stuff but like Mm -hmm. They're making partnerships with local mm-hmm. vineyards. And they make a purpose of, I mean, Eric on his social media, like, he makes a purpose of having the wine be accessible for, like, any time of meal. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be a special meal. Oh, okay. He says repeatedly that sweet berry wine would go really well with a burger. Yeah, I'm sure it would. I mean, we've talked about that before. Yeah. I mean, red wine in general goes well with, like... Yeah, beef, but know. it's taking, like, you can get a mid-tier bottle. mm and you don't have to have you don't have to treat it like it's a hundred dollar bottle. Mm. You can you can have it with your normal meal, right? And enjoy it still. Yeah, I think that fits. Okay. I want to clarify that I do think this is funny, and I do like this. <laughs> okay. I just think like the what is being depicted once you actually know the story, but it's maybe a little gross. Like, let's be real here. Sure, but I would say a lot of Tim and Eric stuff is a little gross. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I think every single episode someone throws up. Yeah, or, or poops themselves. Yeah, or something, like. something disgusting. It's just always. Yeah. Okay, so I find there's like, I'm going to open this now. Go for it. I find there's like two different ways to do this. You can either cut the wax like you would a foil, mm-hmm. or you could just like go straight into it. I mm-hmm. find trying to break the wax tends to be more effort than Mm -hmm. it's worth. So I'm just going to go straight in. Oh, you're going to go straight through the wax. Yep. Straight in the top. I was wondering how you were going to do this. You've seen me do this before. Yeah, but I think you pulled off the wax that time. I have. I have before. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to just try to do it. Okay. Hell yeah. That was a pop. That was a fart at best. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Your face. You weren't expecting that. No, I wasn't. When I opened the bottle of wine for my friend the other day, Ooh, it, this there good. was barely any pop. Good. I was really proud of myself. You opened the bottle? I opened the bottle. That $100 bottle? I did. Yeah. She was like, Nina, will you do it? Selena? Yeah. I was so happy. Selena doesn't like to open bottles of wine, I noticed. <laughs> She's a little intimidated by it. Well, it's a it's a ritualistic process. That means yeah, a lot. and everybody watches you. Everyone watches. Nobody was watching me when I did it. <laughs> I was like, wow, I did really well, and nobody even was here to see it. <laughs> this smells interesting. I feel like there's not really that much of a smell to what's on the cork. Maybe I touched something recently, but it smells like chocolate to me. Oh, well, <laughs> I did recently <laughs> touch chocolate. It could be it. No, my hands don't smell like chocolate. I mean that cork. <laughs> I mean, there's like a a hint of... It's when sweet. Did, when did you buy this bottle? We got it in the club, uh, the Lajar's Wine Club, um, a few months ago. Hmm. Normally, corks have like a lot stronger smell. This doesn't... It is a younger bottle, 2019. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, they recommended having it like it's... not. Re- they said you could have it now. Mm. You could age this as mm-hmm. well. I have two 2018s as well, mm. but those are different blends. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pour that sucker. Color first. I'm sniffing it too. Uh, what would you say the color of this wine is, Gabby? It's it's a deep, deep red, like blackberry yeah. juice. 
Yeah. It's dark. Yeah, it's a very dark red. Especially, like, yeah, around the edges and the middle even. It's not, like... It doesn't remind me of blood. No, it's too dark. It's not red enough. Yeah, it's... It's pretty black. Yeah, very dark red. It's a black red. It's, um... It's not maroon. It's darker than maroon. Plum. Plum. Current. Current? Yep, it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, darker, like, blacker red... Um, like around the edges, it really is like almost black. You want to smell it? I want to sniff it. The bouquet. The bouquet. Aerate it a little bit. Spicy. Yeah, it's got a little like white peppery yeah. kick to it. When I was researching the grapes, I was like, oh, I'm not so sure if I'm going to like this one. <laughs> um, it's like a, yeah, a mix of like four different grapes that are all like, the notes were like spicy, red, you know. Yeah. Heavy. It doesn't smell sweet. It's definitely got a little kick to it. Yeah. White, white pepper. I mean, a little bit of, like, fall spices. Yeah. Like allspice um, or, like, licorice. Oh, well, anise. that's good. Yeah, licorice is good. Um, anise, yeah. Have you ever smelled, like, fresh, like, dried anise? You know, the no. s- the seeds? They usually look like, it looks like a little star. Mm, I don't think so. It's where the f- licorice flavor comes from. Yeah. Smoke. Oh, that was the word I was looking for. Smoky? A little smoky. Sure. Yeah. I think so. What kind of smoke? There's a lot of smokes. Like a, a like barrel smoky kind of. So like Burning a, wood? Burning wood. Yeah. But not like, like I just had a little bonfire. Like an oak barrel? Oak barrel. Yeah, I would go with that. Because I was like burning some random things in my yard the other day. You know, because I got those piles of junk in the yard. <laughs> Well, yes, you do. <laughs> and those, those were giving, like, particular scents. Yeah, yeah. That's not what this smells like. Uh, I also got a headache from, from burning that, so I think I gave myself permanent damage. Oh, but... damn. Well, good on you for noticing the smokiness, because this was actually aged in a burgundy barrel. Oh. Um, so it's like a combination. They did some French burgundy barrels as well as some new and used mm. French barrels, which oh. sometimes they... I mean, like with bourbon, they burn the inside, so it gets that smoky taste. Mm-hmm. But as that grape ages in there, it gives more flavor into the mm. new wines that come into it. Interesting. Well, I'm a pro. There you go. See? It's not that hard. Are you ready to taste it? Sure. <laughs> Goes back for another glass, okay? <laughs> I think it's, like, sweet on, like, the tip of my tongue. Sort of. But then, like, as it, like, moves back, it's sort of more tart. But I wouldn't say, I mean, it's dry, but it's not tannins. It's not, like, it doesn't give me that, like, cotton ball mouth yeah. flavor. I actually think it's pretty smooth. Like, it goes it down is, really yeah. easily. I like it more than I thought it was going to. I was a little nervous. I was like, oh, God, I don't know if I'm going to like this. But I actually, I, I would drink this, more of this. I think a lot of the things we were smelling at mm-hmm. the top are in the taste. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you get that smoky flavor in your mouth too like i like, that's that dryness i think is yeah that, is that smokiness and then i definitely get the tartness like a blackberry yeah but it's still robust mm-hmm. enough that it's it's coats your whole mouth yeah totally and like now that i haven't like taken a sip of it for a few minutes like what i was saying about like that smokiness is, is like it's still in my mouth like yeah. i think that's like the overall after taste is what i'm getting um like there's no sweetness now yeah it was just, like, at the very initial, like, when I was first sipping it. It's super smooth. It's great. I yeah. like it a lot. This is really, really good, actually. It's a little, uh, have you ever had cocoa nibs before? Mm-mm. No. Cocoa nibs are really good. They're, like, pure chocolate, essentially, in a way. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly that, but it's without adding any, like, sugar or um, or less sugar and milk to mm-hmm. your chocolate. Mm-hmm. It's less processed. Okay. It's really good. Anyways, that, I yeah. think it has a little bit of that chocolatey. I think. Oh, interesting. I think Uh-oh. that it's going to go really well with our special tasting. Oh, I love it. I actually really like this a lot. I'm glad. Yeah. Do you want to hear about the grapes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you really don't like me, I think, is what you, you, you're you trying to get across with this wine, is you're giving me four grapes to research here. I'm not doing them all. Oh. We're, we're, oh. 
<laughs> we define orders i see i'm defying yeah you know defiance is if there's one word i would use to describe myself it's defiant Defi- <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> Um, Nina's so defiant, you guys. <laughs> like, oh my god, Nina's like totally defiant. She's a total rebel. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, rebel. Anyway, I'm just gonna do two. You know what? We will do one of these in the future. I am a hundred percent sure. So yeah, definitely. you're gonna find out about all of these groups. But at, at least point. list them all. Uh so people know. No. What... Okay, yeah, I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> So there's Karagnun, Karagnun, Zinfandel, which we've talked about before. Well, we had a white Zinni on the show in yes. the past. Yes, just the last one. Yeah. Charbono and Petite Syrah. Those are the four grapes. They're all red wine, dark-skinned varietals. They're all very cute. I've got, I pulled little photos from the internet of them all hanging from their little clusters. And I love them. <laughs> uh, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to start with, with Carignan, and I'm going to do Charbono. Petite Syrah, we'll talk about it in the future. Sinf- Sinfandel, we've already talked about. Can I say the percentages? Yes, you can. I was actually going to ask you. So the, the Carignan, is that how you're saying it? I, Carignan. Nun. N-U-H-N was how I like spelled it out to be to be pronounced. Okay. Nun is probably, actually it's probably Nun. Okay, Kerrigan. so the, the Kerrigan is the highest at 50 per, 52%, so it's a majority. Then the Zinfandel, the Zinni, at 25 Zinni. Charbono at 12%. Petite Syrah at 11%. And these are all old vines. Ooh. Oh, that's fun. Meaning they came from Europe. Yeah. And they were... And were cloned. Cloned. Cool. Okay, so Kerrigan, originally from Spain. It's a very popular and successful wine grape in France, commonly found in many French wines. The grape's prominence in France hit a high point in 1988 when it accounted for 167,000 hectares and was France's most widely planted grape variety. However, this varietal combined with Aramon caused this huge problem called a wine lake. A wine lake is a perceived surplus of wine. So in other words, it's like there's more wine being produced than is being sold, which sounds like a great problem to have, but it's actually not because like these wineries are losing money when that happens. Why would that be a great problem to have? Why wouldn't we want more wine in this yeah, world? Yeah, but nobody's buying it. Well, that's a them problem. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's wrong what? with them. <laughs> Okay. No, but it's bad. These wineries are losing money, essentially. So what ends up happening is they get sold off and turned into industrial alcohol, which I'm... The wine. The wine does, yeah. So, like, whatever process needs to be... Well, it's called emergency distillation. And, like... So they take the wine mm-hmm. and they make it into industrial alcohol. Yeah. So I'm assuming... That's hooks. Can you imagine? Like, you put all this time and effort into, like, making this wine and it's like your heart is put into it. I wonder it. how many winemakers like, I don't know, switch careers or committed After that. suicide or something. Like yeah. That would suck. No, horrible. Um, what year is this? The, well, so this was sort of like an ongoing thing. There's a, It seems like there was a wine surplus for like kind of a long time. Uh, 20, 2005 to 2007 was when it happened. In 2007, it was determined that European countries had produced 1.7 billion more bottles of wine than they sold. That's a lot of wine. Billion? Damn. Bam. Um, (laughs) That's a lot of wine. (laughs) So to combat this and to encourage overall quality of European wine, the European Union started this like aggressive wine pool, wine pull scheme where vineyard owners were offered cash subsidies in exchange for pulling up their vines. So they were were removing the vines from. Yeah. They were like, pull them up. Toss them in the trash. Whatever you got to do, stop making so much wine. And then that also allowed, like, these vineyard owners to, like, start just, you know, they have less vines to focus on. They can, like, keep, like, make sure the quality of the wine that's actually being produced is really good. I don't know if I like that, though. What happens to the rest of the land? Like, it's just, I I don't think that's the way to do it. It was just get rid of the vines. It was super controversial. People were really mad about it. I don't like it. Yeah. Couldn't you just say, like... See if I was if I was a winemaker during this time, I would oh, like you would have fought them. You wouldn't have taken the subsidy. No, and I would have done 
a different way, probably, I guess, privatizing it more, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is bad. Um, I would have made it like a special wine club. Is like you can be in this club that we are aging these bottles, mm-hmm. and you can buy them down the line. So it's like if you believe in the wine that you're making, you could sell them for a higher profit mm. later. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like there's wine clubs that do that. Mm-hmm. Like there are wait lists for vineyards and wineries. Mm-hmm. Because it's such a high demand to be on this on this list. And you get cases of wine every yeah. year that they have been curating. And they're old. They're old bottles. Mm-hmm. I think that would be the way to go. Well, tell but that I to the European wrong. Union in 2007. I get why they're doing it, but... Yeah. I, it takes so long to grow those vines right like right. there's no other way you could do something with those grapes you can only be made for wine you can't think of another way to mm-hmm. i wouldn't have taken the. Subsidy. i wouldn't have done it been like and that's what i was really desperate for money like i didn't and sell if, any bottles if they had just yeah they might have been really desperate for money yeah so it seems like there was a wine lake before 2005 to 2007, but it seems like that was like the main part of it because of the French wine varieties, Carignan was the most widely affected, dropping by 2,000 to 95,700 hectares and being surpassed by Merlot as the most widely planted grape. So hmm. I think in like... So it was at the top of its game and then this wine lake happened Yeah, it fell. It seems like 1988, there was a wine lake. Carignan was really badly affected. And then 2005 to 2007, there was another one. I mean, oh, it was affected in 1988? Yeah, it seems like that's what's going on here. It says, you said it hit its high point at 88, I thought. Yeah, it was doing well. But by 2000, it had dropped to 95,000 he- hectares oh. from the 167,000 hectares in 1988. I so see. it must have already been... There must have already been a wine lake, and it was being badly affected, and they started doing this, mm. like, wine pull or, like, this, like, vine pull thing. And then in 2005, 2007, they were doing it also. Carignan was really badly affected by it. Um, okay. And it's been surpassed by Merlot as the most widely planted grape. Zinni, we already know about. Charbonneau? We don't know shit about Charbonneau. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Charbonneau. This grape has really cute little plump fruits. Like, look how cute they are. Yeah, they're cute. Red, I like the leaves. They're pretty. Yeah. And the grapes are nice and big. Oh, they look so cute. Don't even need to turn those into wine. I'll just watch, watch, watch. Um, anyway. It's a red wine grape variety, medium bodied, high acidity, and berry fruit aromas and some smoky characteristics. Charbono is originally from the Alpine vineyards in eastern France and now mostly grown in Napa Valley in Argentina. Hmm. Alpine vineyards? That's, that's awesome. Cool. That's that really, really freaking cool. cool. Like, how the heck? Like, the Alpine... This is like, Alpine is like the definition of, is like these things that don't grow higher than like... The tree line. Yeah. Right? So how the heck are you getting... Vines to grow up there. That's really, I don't know. That's really cool. Charbono has several names. Napa Valley, it's known as Charbono. Argentina, it's known as Bonarda. And then there's also different names for it in France and a specific region in France where it originated. This is something that I find like a bit annoying about wine is that uh, there's different names for these varietals. Like, if you look it up, it'll be, like, synonyms, and it'll, like, list, like, a paragraph worth of synonyms for one varietal. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, can we not? Like, <laughs> why are we doing this? Um, the most popular theory suggests that Charbonneau was brought to the valley, like the Napa Valley, by Italians who said it was the varietal Barbera. And then in the 1940s, researchers figured out it wasn't Barbera, and Inglenook Winery released its first Charbonne wine that same decade. So once they figured out that it wasn't that, Inglenook Winery was like, hello, I'm coming in. I'm snapping up that wine. Mm-hmm. And now they're like, they're one of the biggest advocates for Charbonneau because it's starting to like lose ground and it's not as fashionable in California as it used to be. And it now covers less than 100 acres of land in the whole state. Huh. Well, and we got, this is from California. Yeah. So. When I was researching this, I thought that was pretty cool. I wonder if it's in this wine. You said that they sort of get these grapes for this wine. Like, 
not haphazardly, that's sort of a rude word, but... They pull it from those wineries, yeah, yeah. or vineyards. The Garrigan, Zinfandel, and the Charbono all uh, came from Gary Venturi's vineyard in Calpella. Calpella. One last cool thing about this grape. Um, Argentinian Charbono, or for them they call it Bonarda, Wines are usually made with early consumption in mind, while California Charbonneau wines can usually benefit from some time in the bottle. This serves to highlight the vast discrepancy in regional attitudes toward the variety, which I think is interesting. Do you think it's something like culturally, like um, maybe Argentinians don't like the taste of the grape as it ages, like it gets maybe more tanniny or something like that, whereas I feel like People in California and people in Napa love tannins. I feel like they're all about those tannins. Yeah. Yeah, that totally could be it. I don't know what the Argentinians like. Because that's even something, if you notice, even like bread across Mm. countries in France and like Europe, um, the bread is baked a lot darker. Mm -hmm. It's like what we would consider almost burnt i think in america people like a perfect golden brown which is like a lighter golden brown whereas in france their golden brown is darker brown Mm. and then if you go to asia all their stuff is the lightest golden it's not there's no brown it's just golden there's no crust it's super soft because Mm -hmm. that's what they prefer oh interesting and i feel like that's kind of like a aging process in a way totally bread baking and oven totally yeah, that's interesting. Mendocino? Sure. I pronounced it Mendocino earlier, and <laughs> Selena laughed at me. She was like, don't say that on the podcast, Nina. <laughs> Mendocino. Mendocino. It's part of the North Coast. What does that mean, Gabby? You, oh, Californian native, please tell me what North Coast means. You know NorCal? It's just, it's just, why don't we just say just NorCal? Not, well, we do, but it's also on the coast. So North it's coast. Northern California on the coast. Okay, got it. Makes sense. Like, no, that makes sense. I was uh, just like, why don't we? It's geographic. I mean, it, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> Nina. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mendocino County is approximately equidistant from the San Francisco Bay Area and the California-Oregon border. It's... Part of the southernmost California county to be included in the World Wildlife Fund's Pacific Temperate Rainforest Ecoregion, which is the largest te- largest temperate rainforest ecoregion on the planet. This is like Washington State is part of that ecoregion. What does that mean? I mean, you think of the rainforest as being like equator, but there's northwestern United States, Pacific okay. Northwest. Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> has this temperate rainforest going on where it's just it just gets a lot of rain okay so it's a different kind of rainforest yeah it's just a different type of rainforest it's not like as hot and humid okay so just for uh, a hot sec we're gonna go over some winemaking things because i got the technical sheet well on how they made this wine and there's some cool things they did Mm -hmm. so just gonna go over them pretty quick they did carbonic maceration. Do you remember? I think we briefly talked about this before no. on our very first episode. Oh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> um, oh, I do. Is that the one where they like, well, they get in, they step on it? No. Um, in their bikinis. <laughs> no, yeah, it, that was what they did do. But they also, Pool Party also did this. Mm-hmm. Um, so carbonic maceration is a way of macerating the fruit in addition to like if you also do the stomping like they only did the stomping for like i think a couple of days mm. in pool party this one they did the carbonic maceration which is where you add in dry ice oh. to break down the grapes more oh interesting because it creates like co2 in the tank and then it like oh. presses the gas presses down on the grapes rather than like your feet oh wow or metal or something weird and that was used just on the uh, Charbono mm. grape, which is interesting. So they did, like, different methods of fermentation for each grape. For each grape. Wow. And then once they did that, some of it was added together in a stainless steel tank, and they um, added in sulfur oxide to add to the dryness 
but not the tannins, right? Mm. And that's when it aged in the burgundy barrels. And then they racked them to get light lees. Remember the lees? Mm -hmm. That's our uh, sediment from the dead yeast. And then they blended it together, the different blocks. So these were all separate. Then they blended it together. Mm -hmm. And then they racked it again for another month. And then one week before bottling, they racked it again in a clean new tank Mm -hmm. with all of the blends, like all of them together. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of work to make this wine. (laughs) sounds it. Yeah. And they didn't filter the wine out. So Mm -hmm. you could have sediment in this wine. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I mean... With all that work, you would think it would be a more expensive wine. I mean, it, it is. Yeah. It's 35 $35 is, yeah, I think a fair price for, for all of that. I think so. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Special. Special tasting time. Oh, well, Gabby, where did you get these chocolates from? Oh, oh, good question. So these are from a very cool chocolate factory, Whoa. which is always so fun to say, <laughs> called Ethel M. It is based in Las Vegas. And they have a cool chocolate factory that you can check out and see how they how they do it all. And they also have. They also have a cactus garden. A cactus garden. And we went to it during Thanksgiving, and I got a special holiday favorites of their truffles. And they have a variety of flavors. There's five here. We'll have a white chocolate pumpkin pie, dark chocolate eggnog, dark chocolate fudge, white chocolate peppermint silk, and milk chocolate pecan pie. Ooh. Ooh. So we're going to take little tasters of this and try it with the wine and see what goes best. What do you want to start with first? White chocolate pumpkin pie. I know you're going to say that. Well, it's the first one that I read. I really like that. Yeah, that's good. It makes me wonder what it would taste like with a real pumpkin pie. Yeah, it that really nails the pumpkin pie taste. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. No, that, that's a that's one a really good chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, it goes with the wine really, really well. It went well. The spices went well with the wine. Yeah, it's good. Okay, what's next? Well, well, let's just move in. You want to go in order? Dark chocolate eggnog. I really like that one. <laughs> I don't think you'd ever have eggnog with your wine, but that yeah. was really good. Maybe it's a dark chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Well, but I mean, the eggnog flavor does, I mean, goes well, too. Yeah. But I think dark chocolate sort of, maybe it was just, maybe you just need to have the whole truffle. You didn't like it as much? No, I just think the, the dark chocolate, like, masks the eggnog a little bit. Sure. But that could have just been the bite that I had of it. And you um, had a bigger piece of the filling than I did. Yeah. But it's still, that's really good. And they went really well together. Yeah. I think the pumpkin pie went better mm. but i really liked that one the next is dark chocolate fudge <gasps> do you like fudge nina i do like fudge do you mixed feelings about it i feel like sometimes it's too sweet yeah i like that yeah i don't think it went quite as well as the pumpkin pie and the eggnog but no i think we're steadily losing like you know it's not as tasting as good yeah it's too sweet for the wine i think yeah I think so. The pumpkin pie, like the like the spices in it. Yeah, which pairs well with the like the allspice. Yeah, white chocolate, peppermint silk. Hmm. Oh, this one will be interesting. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's sort of strange. I feel like I'm drinking wine with a breath mint. Yeah, because after I like finished swallowing the wine, like the mintiness of it's the peppermint is still there. It overpowers the wine. It does. Yeah, they don't really go together very well but it wasn't yeah it, it wasn't as bad as i thought it would be no okay milk chocolate pecan pie last one last one i don't really like it it's too, so sweet it's too sweet i like it but i like more sweet things than you i haven't had anything that sweet in a really long really really? like aside from like gummy candy oh. chocolatey mm-hmm. that sweet so i just can't do milk chocolate that much anymore mm. it's I, so sweet i liked that i thought it was good I I still think the pumpkin pie one was the best. Yeah. But I, I did like that one, though, yeah. and probably was, was high up there. Which is funny. The pumpkin pie went really well because it is white chocolate, and white chocolate is very sweet, but it's the spices. It's that filling. I think I really like the eggnog one, personally, was my favorite. Pumpkin pie went well with the spices, but I don't know if I'd want that truffle on its own, but I think the wine would go really well with pumpkin pie. Okay. Oh, it was good. 
Liked it. Loved it. Love it. Want some more of it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Did we rate this wine? I think we have not. <clears throat> okay. What rate it? On a scale of one to ten. What's his name? Dr. Brule. Dr. Brules. Steve Brule. Dr. Steve Brules. What would you rate this, Kevy? I really liked it. I think this could go well with a lot of things. Dessert, dinner. Mm-hmm. And we're setting this as a your age dinner party. My age? Like our age. I was going to say, we're like the same age. Almost. I'm talking to the audience here. Oh, I see. Sorry. Your age. Well, we have a wide ranging audience, I suppose. 20s. Late 20s, early 30s. Dinner party. Or just people interested in kind of the new style of wine. Fine. <laughs> Listen, I went to a concert in San Francisco and I was the youngest person there. <laughs> the oldest person looked like they were in their 60s. And wow. this was a brand new band. So oh, you know what? That's I'm, true. It's all out there. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I don't know. You can join the club. You can join our... I don't believe in the old dogs can't learn new tricks thing. I think sure. everybody can take on new hobbies and interests yeah, at totally. any point in their life. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I would give it... I mean, I think this would be a standout bottle at a, at a dinner party. Mm-hmm. I might give it eight and a half, nine. What Whoa. about you? Whoa. You seem to really like it. I do really like for it, actually. Especially for our red wine. I, I was really pleasantly surprised. It's a great, like, dipping your toes into red wine yeah. kind of bottle. It's almost intimidating to look at because it's so dark. Yeah. And yeah. you expect it to be really tanny, but it's not. Mm-hmm. But it still has that dryness. I think it could appease a lot of palates. I think it could... A piece to people that are new into wine, yeah, as well as well as experts. I think so too. I would I would agree. I think an, an eight is was what I was thinking as well. But definitely one of the better red wines that I've had, but not the best. Well, nothing's ever going to be the best. You know, you're young. Oh. You have not tasted that uh, many red wines. I, yet. <laughs> I have peaked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know. I really like this one. Great job, Eric Wareheim. And please come talk to us on our show. Yeah, Eric. 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 <laughs> Eric and Joel. Uh, That's it, folks. That's it. Watch Tim and Eric. Watch on, Tim and Eric. I drink think Hulu and wine. HBO. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're having a lovely December. Yeah. And uh, if you're feeling like, if you're having any like holiday Christmas parties with your friends, bring this bottle. Invite They'll love us. it. And invite us. We Hell just yeah. want to come to your parties. We need friends. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> no, but really, this is a great bottle. And uh, support California wines, I guess. For sure. Support every wine. Except unless they're like really crappy people, then don't support them. So do your research. Do your homework. Do put yeah. a lot of work into it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Think about every dollar that you spend and where it's going and who you're funding. Yeah. Um, anyway, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Small Business Saturday. Brought to you by Amex. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening to Bonnie and Barrels. On Podcast One. On Podcast One. And wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. That's it. Please yeah. DM us. Talk to us, guys. Uh, let us know if you have any recommendations, a wine that you've tried recently that you uh, want other people to learn about let us know yeah we'll put it on our list we have a long list that we're we're going through and share us with your friends fam rate us review us all the good things oh five stars five stars only five stars nothing less yeah (laughs) or more i don't think you can go higher than five well add in the comment i would give more if i could (laughs) Anyway, goodbye, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good weekend. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Botany and Barrels on Podcast One. Botany and Barrels is produced by Petricor, hosted by Gabby Rapp and Nina House, edited by Julia Dillard. Special thanks to Brian Liberty. 